So welcome to the webinar. Good morning from London and good afternoon in Singapore. Um, so, uh, wave an introduction. I'm Lily, uh, I'm the Head of Content at Tipsies, um, and I'll be kind of introducing the webinar and our speakers today. Um, but really, um, the focus will be on Daniel from Triptease and Kim over from Fast Working. Um, so today we're talking about how to turn guest behaviour insights into conversions. Um, as for an agenda, we'll have a, a little bit from Kim and Daniel just about themselves. Um, then Daniel's going to walk us through uh, guest behaviour by country. So looking at some of the data we collected earlier this year um, and kind of how hotels on a by hotel basis can turn that kind of uh, insight into um, conversion maximization opportunities uh, before moving over to Kim who's going to um, talk through some data around uh, guest behavior uh, by device so desktop mobile tablet and the opportunities for hotels there. So as I said before do ask questions throughout and um, there's a panel on your go to webinar control panel um, which I'll be monitoring and we'll put to the speakers um, throughout um, and if at any time that isn't working I'll also be um, I'm also on my email which is content at triptease.com so do submit over there as well um, and last bit of housekeeping uh, the webinar is recorded and you'll all receive it um, by email even if you can't stay for the whole thing so don't worry about that okay so moving on to our speakers um, we've got Daniel here uh, who's the general manager for Triptease Asia Pacific um, and we've got Kim who uh, is over at uh, Fast Booking, uh, also in Asia Pacific. So um, if you two wanted to just introduce yourselves briefly. Sure, so uh, look, my name's Daniel. I'm the, uh, the GM over at uh, Triptease in Singapore. Um, I've been here for 10 years now. Um, I've been within Triptease for about six months. Um, and previous to that, I was helping to scale Facebook and Google um, across the region. And uh, outside of Triptees, I suppose I'm still trying to um, play a bit of rugby. And you can see me sort of traipsing around Singapore's uh, worst pitches um, on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Um, Kim, did you just want to say a bit about yourself too? OK. Hello, my name is Kim. I'm the VP for Strategic Sales and Account Management in Fast Booking. I'm also based in Singapore. Uh, I've also been here for just over seven months now uh, with Fast Booking. I'm um, I'm responsible for the uh, sales and account management support for our clients in the Southeast Asia and Greater China markets uh, here in Asia Pacific. Okay, back to you, Lily. <laughs> Perfect, thanks so much. Um, so for now, I'm going to step out and just allow both Daniel and Kim just to briefly talk through a little bit about Triptease and Fast Booking um, in case you weren't familiar with the companies already. So Daniel, over to you. Great, thanks, Lily. Um, so yeah, first of all, I'm going to just the camera just because I've got some with uh, the connection today. Uh, but for those of you who aren't aware who Triptees are, um, we have offices in London, New York and Singapore. And we offer a range of tools that help hotels to drive direct bookings. And you can see from the slide here, we've got a parity management solution, which is our real time reporting tool for discrepancies as they're occurring on the OTAs. We also provide a price check solution, which is a live price comparison for hotels to use on their booking engine and prove to the visitor that the, uh, the best rate is always direct. We've also got a message portal solution, um, which is our on-site messaging and notifications tool. And then in the bottom right, you can see our front desk uh, solution, which is our fully automated chatbot. Um, which also has the capability for human agents to engage and monitor and convert their guests. Um, we also as well provide uh, a, a variety of benchmarking tools which can help you see how you stack up against the competition. And then the last area that we started to move into is our guest acquisition product, which is our intelligent meta bidding solution. So that's uh, enough for me and I'll, I'll pass over to Kim to sort of hand over what fast booking are up to. Thank you, Daniel. So uh, here's an overview on fast booking. We are created in 2000. So now fast booking has over 26 offices worldwide, 10 of which are in Asia. Uh, they are in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Hong Kong, China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and down under in Australia. 
more than 10,000 hotels trust fast booking solutions, which aim to restore a fair balance to the hotels by developing an aggressive direct distribution strategy to reduce their distribution costs and so helping them to take back the power. Uh, next slide, please, Lily. Lily, yeah. Thank you. So uh, the solutions that we provide for hotels are, have uh, three key areas. Firstly, is the drive web van drive web rev revenue on the left, and we do this by uh, traffic acquisition, and that includes uh, search engine marketing, uh, display ads, which are banner ads, also uh, what we call direct link. They are actually meta search marketing campaigns. Um, also included under traffic acquisition, we are. Uh, uh, we also have website design um, that uh, allows uh, higher conversion for uh, to the booking engine. In the middle section, you see maximize bookings and rep margins. So this is done through our innovative attraction booking engine, um, also our distribution channel manager, GDS connectivity, as well as um, other uh, services connecting to other services such as PMS, CRM and payment gateway. In the last section, know your market. We have our rate screener and parity screener, which are rate shopping tools. We also have our calendar intelligence tool. And lastly, e-reputation management tool, which we work with Trust You. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Kim. Um, so to move on to the content, um, just to give a little bit of background about uh, why we're here. Um, so a few months ago, um, Tricktease and Fastbooking together produced a white paper based on um, data analysis from around 500 hotel websites that we were tracking together. Um, so the link's up there on the screen, but I'll also include it in the follow-up email. Um, so it's called Maximize Conversion by Understanding Your Guest. And it covered um, the kind of some of the content we're going to cover today and also a lot more as well around parity um, and other behaviours. Um, so the data was collected from March to June 2018, so Q2 of this year. Um, and it covered the importance of parity, learning from guest behavior to optimize your website, which Daniel will touch on today, how booking engine conversion rates and booking value are impacted by lead time, and how guest be booking behavior varies by device, which again, Kim's going to talk to you today. Um, so it's well worth going to have a look at, um, and then just to give you an understanding of the data that we're looking at. So this is the data covered in that paper and also that we're basing um, today's webinar on. Um, so. Uh, you can see that we're looking around 5 million searches uh, just down here, um, over 1.7 million sessions and around 60,000 bookings in total. So it's a pretty solid spread of data that we're looking uh, at here. Um, but again, worth emphasizing that this isn't um, going to be, rep the insights we're going to be pulling out um, aren't going to be representative of all hotels. Obviously, with any kind of data set, you've got its qualifications. For example, if you look at our uh, Maldives data set, um, we've got extremely high level of searches, very low conversion rate. Um, so that things like this, it's always worth having an eye out for because they might kind of skew averages overall. Um, so what we're trying to do here in this webinar is look at this data that we've got as if it kind of was a hotel's own data and how that a hotel could look at that data and pull out, uh, pull out some insights specific for them. Um, so with that, I will hand over to Daniel to talk us through uh, guest behavior by visitor country of origin. Thanks very much. So um, look, to, to kick off with, this graph may look like a handful, um, but if we sort of start to just break it down into the phases, it can start to make a lot more sense. So firstly, what we've done is we split out the, the visitor country across the bottom, and then the green and blue columns, you can see the session and the user counts. So what we can see here, first of all, is that there's a lot more people coming on into performing searches from the US than from any other country. Now, my first off initial reaction is in the current sort of six months that I've been here, all the hotels that I've been speaking with, the US has never come out as a sort of top, um, top visitor segment for them. So it's interesting to see just how even looking at sort of a limited data set can actually sort of surface this but it would be interesting to see where you would rank your uh, individual country sets. If we now look at the black line, you can see that there is the conversion rate um, associated with that, and the red line is the average booking value. So my thoughts on how to use this data is that a successful business is all about taking this data and providing incremental improvements to your conversions. So what we want to do with any digital strategy is improve 100 things by 1%, not one thing by 100%. 
And that's the same with the digital strategy and how we're going to sort of look at this webinar today. So if we look at sort of picking out specific insights um, from the specific segments of the audience, we can show you how to make some changes that will drive website conversions. For a lot of you, it can be hard to know where to start, but if you look at your data like this, you can really start to identify areas for improvement. For example, if we were to look at this data as if we were a hotel, um, we would see that the US is the most important market. Now you're getting a lot of visitors and a high average booking value, which is great, but it also means that uh, your conversion rates are very low, which are under sort of 2%. And this is the lowest across all your country segments. So there's some clear actions to take, which we'll go into in a second. But by contrast, if you look at the Japanese data and the Japanese visitors, the average booking value is much lower than the American guests, around $250 compared to the $700. However, if we look at their conversion rate, it's significantly higher. In fact, Japanese guests convert at a higher rate than any other country on this sample. We're looking at a conversion rate of around 6% compared to the 2% for American visitors. So from this graph alone, what we can see is we've got clear, two clear insights to target. American guests are spending a lot of time on your website, but they aren't converting. By contrast, the Japanese guests are converting very highly, but are spending comparatively little. So we could probably understand why both those things are happening. American guests are coming from further away, so it's likely they're spending more time researching coming back, doing multiple searches, and uh, obviously spending a lot longer in Asia once they come over, whereas the Japanese visitors might be traveling within the same country, uh, doing business, or be likely to be a shorter trip. Now, by understanding these nuances of behavior, we can start to help you create display offers that feel personalized and segmented to the people that are viewing them. So by that, what I mean is um, we understand that, trip, that within Triptees, a lot of hotels have spoken about, they have all this data, but it's hard to understand this data. And not just that, there's just so much of that data. How can you start to think about where should I be going to get this information and where can I start to surface the relevant insights? So this is an example of how we're trying to surface these insights for your business. We're talking about taking the most important information for every hotel and feeding it back to you in a way that drives actions and will have an impact on your conversion rates. So here we can see an example of a real Australian client looking at their uh, performance by visitor country. So if we take a look at the outliers on this and look at conversion rate and average booking value, we can see that the American visitors have an average booking value of $615, which is way above the average of 300. So this is an attractive guest for the hotel to convert. However, the conversion rates for guests in the US are a lot lower, as we saw earlier. So if I was at this hotel and I was running their marketing campaign strategies to try and drive more direct bookings, I would look to introduce a campaign that might lower the barrier to conversion. So for example, offering a discount on longer stay for American visitors. Now what we would do is the target button, uh, target this country button you can see here, lets the client click on this and out of the table, immediately set up a campaign that's just for American visitors, which means you won't have to offer a discount to lower value guests from other countries, and you can ensure that this message will only be seen by American visitors. So if we look at an example of how this could look, an American visitor comes to your website, and what we will see is that this message will only be displayed to them. There's an important step that we haven't shown you behind the scenes here, which is the creation. We have a simple interface that allows you to create multiple messages and multiple segments and means you can continually test and learn without requiring you to take outside resource. So as we spoke about earlier, this is not about creating one campaign and expecting the job to be finished. You need to be in a position to make constant improvements to your business. So another example is you need to be able to test where you're gonna be placing the message, uh, the color of the message, where does it appear in your story online? Every facet of the campaign will have an impact of conversion. And as a marketer, you always want to ensure that you can test and learn on an ongoing basis. So if we look at another example for a same hotel, um, being, it's being it's in Australia, you can understand they're getting a lot of uh, visitors from Australia. And these are converting at a lot higher on average 
but they aren't very high value. Now, the hotel could build on this engaged base by offering uh, a longer stay discount or discount upgrades to higher value rooms. So what this might look like is setting up an exit guest for any Australian visitor that comes to the site. So anyone who's uh, on the web page for too long or anyone who looks like they're about to sort of click out of the website, we can show them an offer and try to encourage them to book directly. That offer could be uh, something along the lines that we have here to offer the guests who have searched for a single night to add another night to the trip or in return for a free breakfast. It's a small benefit that's low cost to the hotel, but it could be the encouragement that you need to help a guest convert. Now back to Lily uh, to see if there's any questions that have come in and uh, then hand over to Kim. Perfect, Daniel, that was really clear. Um, no questions through as of yet, but um, again, for our audience, do keep submitting them um, in the panel um, and I'll keep asking them to help as well. Um, Daniel, it's quite important for me if I could um, yes, we do. So I've got the trip I'm open here, what you were talking about there with the um, the easy segmentation. And I think that's a really important point to touch on is that um, with any tool you want to be um, able to uh, react quickly to this kind of data on a seasonal, um, monthly, even weekly uh, um, basis. Um, because setting one campaign live at the start of the year is not going to, and targeted at one section of visitors, is not going to be having the same impact by the end of that year. Um, so without spending too long on it, um, this is a, in the Tripti's campaign manager where you would introduce that kind of uh, geographical uh, targeting, but you can also segment that with check-in date, length of stay, that kind of thing. So you can really narrow down, make sure you're not un offering unnecessary discounts uh, to those guests who are going to convert anyway. Anyway, uh, with that, I will hand over to Kim, um, who's going to talk us through um, some guest behaviour by device. Hello again. So I'm going to talk about um, the guest behaviour by device. And uh, first, let's look at how these guests uh, browse uh, on the website. So on this slide, you can see some uh, blues on the left, which are representing browsing uh, via the desktop. The middle section where you see the green portion uh, by using mobile, and the last bit in the lighter blue is tablet users. So very obvious, um, Asia Pacific are more mobile users, as you can see. So for those hotels that are not catering to mobile bookers, the next few charts will be a wake-up call for you. This chart shows that browsers uh, on desktop are in, uh, yeah, so we can have all these uh, 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 portions. As you can see, Asia Pacific, 43% um, uh, desktop and more than 50% uh, 50, 50 using the mobile. So can we move on to the next slide? Yes. Um, so very clearly, we can see local traffic um, browsing on the mobile device, uh, most of all. And this is in line with the worldwide trends, um, according to the total session counts. So mobile is the way people do, uh, go to for browsing. Hoteliers, uh, if you're aiming to attract guests from within the Asia Pacific region, you should ensure that your local language website offers a seamless mobile experience to capitalize on these searches. An essential investment could be a mobile friendly web chat or chatbot um, that Daniel spoke about earlier on um, that will facilitate easy booking without having to move to the telephone or even the desktop. However, despite this high mobile traffic, the conversion rate on mobile is still significantly lower than desktop for APEC guests. Uh, we will take a closer look at the uh, conversion rates later on. So let's look at the next slide. And you can see here in the difference uh, in device preference between visitors from North America and Asia is very stark. Over 50% of uh, people in Asia Pac are browsing these web hotel websites on their mobile. Uh, under 5% of visitors from US and Canada are actually doing that. They are mostly going onto the desktop, as you can see, for 94%. So looking at this, it tells us there's a very huge cultural and behavioral disparity. However, it is critical to view reports like this in the context of what else you know about your guests. We've, we've already seen that searches from North America are more likely to book um, higher value, long lead time stays, um, mainly because they, are, you know, they have a long distance to travel. So this purchase itself, um, is that's why they have to use more towards desktop to browse than the mobile. There are more details to look for. 
But that's not necessarily that Americans in general avoid browsing and purchasing on mobile. Although mobile is not the default that is in many Asian countries, mobile traffic makes up 41% of all US internet usage compared to 78% uh, users in Singapore. So let's take a closer look now at the booking behavior. So on this chart again, um, you can see guests from all regions are booking on the desktop, mainly majority are booking on the desktop. APEC guests actually have the highest bookings on mobile at 30%. Again, remember they were using 51% of them were browsing on the mobile, but 61% are booking on the desktop. Only 30% are booking on the mobile. But interestingly, we're seeing a slight increase in mobile bookings um, of 8% for North America compared to browsing, which is 4%, uh, 5%. Okay. And this indicates a reverse trend from the Asians, majority of whom are going back to their desktop to book. So comparing the two, you can see Asians uh, revert back to the desktop to book. And then um, America is um, a little bit different. But let's look at the conversion rates now. Okay, so here we go. Although all guests are converting on various devices, the Asia Pacific guests are having the highest conversion rates on both desktop and mobile, as you can see from the columns. By the way, the average conversion rate for our website is 2%. So from there, you can see the, uh, you can measure the difference. So Asia Pacific desktop um, converting at 6%, over 6%, and mobile is converting just over 2.3%, all right? So as you can see, the North Americans have a very low desktop conversion rate of just 0.91%, the small blue portion there at the end. Um, that's the North American conversion compared to the Asian uh, at 6%. That's quite a lot of difference. Again, that shouldn't be taken as a representative of American users as a whole. Uh, based on the behavior we have already seen for users on the subset of hotel websites, one hypothesis is that the American users are planning longer term and higher value states and potentially also making a lot of speculative uh, inspiration gathering or, or, or wanderlust searches. You know, they're dreaming, they're wondering where to go, what to do. Um, that's why the conversion rate tend to be lower um, because the buying intent is uh, quite small for them. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So now we want to compare the two conversion rates between the Asians and the Americans. The difference, as I said earlier, 0.91% for Americans and 6% for Asians. The difference is six times um, more. So, if you wonder what this means, we'll just move on to the next slide. Yeah. You see the difference in the mobile conversion? The difference is very, very small between the Asia-Pac users against the American users, uh, just 1.3 times. So APEC users are actually moving from mobile browsing to desktop booking. So we look at the last two slides together. Conversely, a small portion of American guests are doing their browsing on desktop and then going to mobile to book. It's quite the opposite, actually. It's crucial that your hotel website is facilitating this cross-device behavior by pro providing a coherent experience across both desktop and mobile. It helps to understand why guests are using different devices at different stages of their booking journey. So one way to get a better understanding of this is by user testing your mobile and desktop sites with real people and see what they find easy or difficult about booking a room. So on the whole, if this was a single hotel's data, so you may want to look at these few areas to optimize. One, the mobile booking experience for APEC guests. Note that there's a significant drop off from mobile browsers to bookers. Remember, they go back to desktop to book. And then the other way is desktop booking experience for North American users. Majority are browsing on the desktop, but conversion there is very low. And they go. some of them go on to the mobile to book. 
So crucially, this data can be used as a pointer to where the gaps are in your booking flow with different guests. This kind of visibility helps you to identify areas for improvement and track the impact of any changes you make. So remember, a website is just a website, but you've got to make sure that every stage of the way has been done properly so that uh, it can encourage the highest conversion uh, available for your guests. That's it for me. Back to Lily. Thank you. Thanks very much, Kim. So um, we've had a question in for the speakers from Kelvin. Um, so uh, a question on the browsing behavior. So if we go back to that slide, um, so 94% of North Americans browsing on desktop is very high. Um, if there was a native mobile app, would this have an impact on this? I.e. North American users may have higher usage of native apps, native apps instead of mobile websites. So I um, guess this one's for both of you. I, how is your, um, what's your experience of kind of hotel native apps and their kind of uptake for guests? I'm sorry, you're breaking up quite a bit. I didn't quite get the question. Oh, sorry. Um, I'll repeat it. Um, so the question was around native apps. Um, so North American guests, obviously, um, very high usage of desktop in this sample. Um, and the question was around, um, do we think that introducing a native app uh, for the hotel, for example, would uh, kind of move those North American browsers onto mobile. So the question was around, what's your experience of native apps for hotels and their impact uh, on guests? So, so after you can, no problem. Go ahead, Daniel. Okay, Daniel, go ahead. <laughs> okay, no, so, um, so my experience with um, across the apps is people are looking towards it as a solution to, to all their worries. But it's still about getting people to download that app that then becomes the problem. So if you still have uh, and build a brilliant app across your business, you still need to get people to download it. Now, where, where I'm seeing a lot more traction is people who build a, uh, a great mobile experience for their clients are finding better returns than investing in that app. Once they have the app, they then have to spend a lot of time and investment trying to get people to actually download that app. And then they find the usage and the actual um, sort of KPIs that they've set for that app haven't particularly performed as well as they've wanted. Um, so certainly that that is a trend that I've seen across um, Asia Pacific, across the the e-com and across the uh, the travel game. Um, just to add on to that, um, mobile apps are nice, to, you know. Um, as far as hotel groups are concerned, if you are a major group with thousands of hotels such as Accor, Starwood, um, the mobile app will work for your group of guests because there are so many hotels. However, for a smaller group, then that may not work because the guest has a limited choices of hotels in the different regions. So they, if they want to search for other uh, uh, majority of the locations, then they will still go back to uh, the Google, uh, really, to make searches. So it's still going back to Google for um, uh, all, all the searches on hotels. Apps is, um, uh, uh, well, works for certain groups of hotels. Um, and also like what Daniel said, you have to download. So new users may not be so, um, uh, maybe open to using these apps. Or sometimes they download and they forget about it because you know it may not apply to some locations. Yeah. Thanks guys. Um, so I wanted to just bring up something, thinking about uh, these conversion rates. Um, and as Kim, you were touching on the kind of shift between different ones. So uh, guests from Asia Pacific, moving to desktop and vice versa for, for American guests. And Kim, I wanted to ask you kind of about fast bookings for you on this, this kind of cross device behavior and a coherent experience between mobile and desktop. And kind of what's your best practice for, for hotels who are creating that mobile experience on their site and trying to optimize it? Um, kind of in parallel with their desktop site. How do, you, how do you make those work together? So for at Fast Booking, we recommend building the mobile site first rather than the desktop. So of, of course, these days, websites are all responsive, meaning the website will adjust itself to fit the size of the user, whether tablet, mobile, and desktop. Um, however, the way we build websites is we plan the mobile uh, structure first and then we adapt that to the desktop. This way we cater to the mobile users first and foremost and then the desktop. So because it is so important when we hit the users 
as they are searching because when they are able to find what they're looking for, that's when they will go to the desktop to book. Um, that's majority of the Asia pack, but also uh, for Americans, they go to the, uh, the they do it the other way around. But the conversion again, as you can see, is very low uh, due to the um, higher value and longer stay uh, searches that they are looking for. So I think it's important that you look at the mobile site first and then the desktop. But obviously, they have to be responsive so that um, a user experience is seamless. Perfect, thank you. And Daniel, what's what's your experience of that? Of kind of the focus on on mobile versus the desk versus desktop in the hoteliers that that kind of you've you've interacted with. So from the hotels that I've worked with, um, I think a very similar trend that they um, they still get a lot of sort of view throughs on the the mobile, um, but in terms sort of the bookings, it's it's all pushed through the desktop. So in terms of sort of making sure that everything is is um, is mobile enabled is exactly the right strategy and where everyone should be pushing. Um, we know that you know, Asia is a mobile first um, market. So I think it's only a matter of time before the booking actually starts to pick up through that mobile web uh, experience as well. Perfect, thanks. Um, do keep sending your questions through whether about the data we've uh, covered today or about trip to use or fast booking, um, we'd be happy to answer them. And if we don't have time for it today, we will follow up via email. So do keep them coming in. Um, one more question that's come in is kind of, um, we've obviously focused a lot on um, the visitor country in this webinar, so splitting out from where your traffic is coming from. Um, so kind of for both of you, I was wondering, um, aside from kind of obviously uh, distribution and marketing channels, purely on the site, so um, kind of conversion optimization efforts on site, how much are you seeing hoteliers take into account that where their traffic is coming from in terms of how they optimize their site? So it is important that a site structure is built for conversion. So how do we convert a website? A, uh, a browser must be able to, or rather a guest visitor, must be able to find what, they would, uh, what they're looking for within two or three clicks on the website. So in order to optimize a website, you've got to make sure that your website structure is easy to navigate, easy to find what information the guest is looking for. And for hotels, it's quite straightforward. The location is important, the rooms is important, services and things like that. Not only that, when they go onto the uh, booking engine to look for rates, uh, it is important that the guest is able to find the rates that they want, they're looking for, uh, whether there are any special offers uh, for the dates that uh, they want to book. And also for us, we have this special feature for uh, called a dynamic calendar, where you can display all the rates um, at one glance. Uh, in fact, over the next two months, you can see the daily rates so that the guests can actually pick and choose whichever rate that they feel that is the most suitable for them, whether in terms of rates or availability or whatever. And also uh, having some of the um, nice features such as last rooms available so that it gives a little bit of a stress marketing uh, for the for the guests to feel an urgency to book quickly because the rooms are running out, especially for peak periods, high seasons. These are nice things that you want to put on so that you can attract the guests to quickly make a booking and get a higher conversion. Perfect, thank you. Um, Daniel, in your experience, kind of um, how are, what's the level that hoteliers are, are using these kinds of insights kind of in their day to day and how, in how they uh, optimize their website? Um, uh, I wondered if we could talk a little bit more. We started exploring previously um, the kind of difficulty some hotels have of quick uh, updating their website and just whether you could give us a kind of your view on that. Yep, sure. So um, a lot of the businesses that I've met with across Asia, um, they feel as though this is a problem that they've solved. They, they have a promotions page and the, the customer can go to their promotions page and select the relevant promotion. And that's kind of what they feel is, is the best way to segment and uh, target their customers. Once we actually start sort of digging into the details and looking at how many people have actually visited that page, how many people have actually taken up time to, to take on those offers, the story becomes quite clear that it's not getting the interaction that people are, that the, the business is wanting to see. They spend a lot of time thinking about the best offers to, to put out there, but the uptake is generally pretty low. So where we see a lot of success is by doing things like the targeting by um, country, the targeting by length of stay, 
um, targeting if they're a new versus returning customer. You know, my opinion of marketing is it's about creating that one-on-one -on -one communication is the ultimate dream. And the only way you're going to be able to get there is by creating multiple segments and multiple types of campaigns and continually being able to, to change those and drive those. If you're in a situation where every time you have to make a change to your website, you have to go to an IT provider and you know, it takes time and it takes turnaround, it means that you're not going to be in a position where you can try uh, different colors, different location, different placements, different types of segments, which is ultimately what you need to be doing to ensure that you get the, the, the highest conversions and then continually test and change it. Uh, the examples we saw earlier, I'd expect that we would be changing those on a regular basis and you don't just expect once you set them up, you let it run indefinitely. Exactly. Cool. Thanks so much. So I'm just going to um, move on just to the kind of key takeaways um, and do jump in either of you um, if if you've kind of taken anything else from this, from the webinar. Um, so the first one I think um, is look for divergences when you're looking at uh, your kind of your performance data, looking for divergences in your average booking value and your conversion rates amongst your different segments. So your largest gaps are where you're likely to be able to move the needle. So what Daniel was talking to earlier was the kind of making 100 changes of 1% rather than one big cure all change. Um, so looking at those, like those segments, the American guests versus the Japanese guests, where you've either got very high conversion rates and very low booking value or vice versa, that's somewhere that you can immediately kind of set up a targeted campaign um, and uh, move that needle. And the second would be what Daniel's just been describing. So an on-site solution that allows you to quickly take action based on data and flexibly update your website for different audiences and behaviors. Um, so um, Daniel's covered this, um, but you know, not just having uh, you know, one review of kind of your performance for the year, taking an action you know, that involves time and investment from your IT provider and that kind of thing, um, and then leaving it for another 12 months. It's about that kind of constant iteration, small change, look at the results uh, and keep moving on. And then the third one I've got is always look at your data in context. So um, we've, we're all aware of the, the extent of data that hotels are exposed to um, on an almost daily basis. Um, and it can, it can just be, um, it, you know, looking at a big block of numbers can outface even the smartest hotelier. So putting your reporting in context and really asking questions of your data. What am I trying to learn from this, uh, from this group of numbers? Um, so at the start, we started with that data table. Um, but it would actually be very hard to kind of draw out uh, the, the necessary insight from that. So putting it into context, what you already know about your guests um, is, uh, is, you know, really the way forward with this. Um, Daniel, Kim, I didn't know if you wanted to, to, to add any summary up of your own. So my, my summary would be what we've sort of spoken about there is, is you know, marketing is not, um, you know, a science or an art. To me, it's a combination of both, and it's about continually sort of testing and learning. And as you say, you know, the marginal gains, you know, improving lots of things on a continual basis rather than one magic bullet to try and solve all your problems. You know, the, the hotels that are sort of engaging in that strategy are the ones that we are seeing succeeding, uh, and the ones that are still in sort of the legacy um, base are the ones that are starting to struggle and are starting to, to sort of see their direct bookings continue to drop. And it's about planning where you want to be in the next sort of, you know, in the next couple of years. You know, the, the OTA game is only going to get stronger. It's not going to get any weaker. Um, so it's about bringing, uh, sort of bringing competitive techniques that are going to help you to engage directly with clients. I think that's a really valid point, actually, just to touch on. Um, what you said about the OTA is only getting stronger. And we all know that this is what this kind of testing and learning from data is what they're doing every single day. So booking.com have something like 1500 AB tests running at any one time. Um, so they've got hundreds of little product squads that are just testing the position of a button or you know the experience of the checkout. Um, and if, if hotels are hoping to kind of move their bookings um, to a greater share in that direct channel, then we really do need to be looking towards that kind of behavior. Um, obviously, they've, the scale they've got is you know, unmatchable by one hotel, but um, if you're with a solution that allows you to, A, kind of have great visibility of your data, but also kind of puts it in context and a benchmark with, with other hotels in your region or your average booking value bracket, um, that's really important and will allow you to kind of take on that kind of iterative attitude that the OTAs have success. 
So Kim, I didn't know if you wanted to, to sum up from fast booking side. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so for me, um, I have one word for everyone today, and that word is visibility. So you need to be there where the guests are browsing, where they're looking for a hotel. You want to be in front of them. So how do you do that? Um, make sure that you're available in all channels. So mobile is definitely key for Asia and also in in America, uh, they're looking more on desktop. So you've got to be there both. And uh, whether you do how you do your marketing, you can target by country, you can target by device. Uh, these are all available. Technology is nothing new and everyone is doing that. So look at your guest, um, uh, where they're coming from. And if your target audience is US, you may want to focus more on desktop. But for Asia, you may want to focus more on mobile and you can do create mobile uh, uh, campaigns, uh, mobile uh, promotions only and targeted at specific market like the Japan market or Thai or what, whatever. Uh, so that's, that's very important. So you've got to be there when they're looking for it. And if you're not there when they're looking, I'm sorry, um, they won't be able to find you. So it's as simple as that. Perfect. And with that, I think that's probably a great place to wrap up. Um, so thank you, everybody, for your time today. I hope you found it useful. Um, we do have plenty of recordings of our previous webinars on the Triptease website and Fastbooking. I know that you have you have yours as well. So um, do check if you found today useful. Do take a look at uh, previous uh, topics that we've explored. Um, if you do have any questions or you wanted to follow up personally, um, you can reach me on at content at triptease.com. It will have been in your confirmation email. Uh, when you when you registered and you'll uh, be receiving the recording uh, tomorrow uh, to rewatch and share and uh, whatever you'd like to do with it. Um, so thank you both so much for your time, Daniel and Kim, um, and thank you to everyone on the recording. And I hope you have uh, a great rest of your day.